All right, recording is rolling. So it is Wednesday, November 2nd. I got a lab lined up for you guys today. All right, here, guys, guys, everybody look up here so, so you know what's going on. All right, so uh, but before I tell you guys about lab, uh, all right, picture retakes are this Friday. So if you're not happy with your original picture, then uh, wear something good to school on Friday. Uh, and that'll be in the gym lobby. Um, I, I'm going to get you guys as a quiz to you guys soon, probably tomorrow, I think. But that'll be another open up take home. Um, that'll be due by Monday. So you guys will be fine. So, okay. All right, then, uh, don't worry about this AP style uh, right up. Right. But here's a here's the setup for this. All right, we got we got the ball launchers back. You guys remember the ball launchers? Oh yeah, ball launcher. And this is spring loaded, right? So the last time you guys saw these, we were doing a lab, uh, the the projectile lab. We're saying like, hmm, can you determine the blast speed based on let's say, uh, if, if you know how high the launcher was, if you aim it horizontally, and where does the ball land, right? You know, there were some alternative setups you could have done, but we're just going to focus on this particular setup today. It's like, where's the ball land? Well, that's uh, directly related to the, the blast speed. It's a direct relationship, actually, right? Okay, so, like, if it's twice as fast, it's going to go twice as far. Okay. Uh, now, we're going to essentially repeat that, except we're going to throw on uh, an additional step to figure out, hey, what is the spring constant of this launcher? Like, how stiff is the spring? Okay. Uh, you, you can feel it. You can feel it because if you take the ramrod, you guys remember the one of the technical details is that uh, the, the only balls we have at this point are like these squishy bouncy balls. So you have to ramrod it first and then put in the ball after the fact. You guys remember if you put in the ball first and then ramrod it, it gets it gets jammed in there. It's really hard to get out. Okay. So right, you guys remember that? Right. So let, let me make sure you guys are following. What are you gonna do first? You're gonna put the ball on first and then ramrod it. You're gonna ramrod first and then put the ball in. Ramrod. Yeah, ramrod first and then put the ball in. Right. Right. And, and you can feel us. So listen. Click. Click, click. It's got like three click settings, right? So just make sure you're using the same click setting over and over. So if you do three, then just keep doing three, right? If you do one, keep doing one, right? right. And then uh, you can, now you can put the ball in, you can lift the thing, and pow, and then out the ball goes. All right, so, all right, you got good so far? Right. Oh, ooh, uh, I bet a lot of you guys have this page out. You guys remember this page that I gave you uh, the other day, right? It's got, conceptual questions on one side that you guys uh, follow along with the hoop, which is going to be a lot of your quiz questions. And on the other side, uh, we've got, uh, well, there's a pendulum lab we did the other day. And now, ah, now today is this one, right? Uh, now, I was looking at this table, and I did leave off one uh, important detail on this table that you need in your uh, calculation. But I went ahead and did this for you anyway, which is the mass of the ball, the mass of the ball. So the, the balls are about 6.4 grams. Let's just go ahead and use that, except when you do your calculation, you guys remember how everything has to be in base SI units? Uh, guys, is gram the base SI unit for mass? No, it's kilogram, right? Can you guys convert from grams to kilograms? Roll the decimal three places. Right, so go ahead, go ahead and write this on your paper, right? Mass is equal to, right? You guys do this right now, mass is equal to? Oh, you, you guys did write your name, right? Right, your name's right here. Right, so you guys get, get, get credit when you turn this in. Mass is equal to? Put 0 0.0064 kilograms. Okay? okay. So if, at one point in the calculations, you're going to need that number. Okay. okay. So you guys know the mass of the ball? Right. Right. Okay. Mass of the ball. All right. So uh, let me take you guys through the, through the thought process. Then we'll go out, grab some data, then we'll come back and I'll help you guys synthesize the data and figure out the answer to the question what is the spring constant of the launcher? Okay. So um, here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to focus on this picture first, then I'll go back and I'll explain it a second time going through this table that you guys can very conveniently fill out while you guys are out there. All right, so the big picture, like fourth for the trees thought process is, well, this is going to be in two parts, right? So you can figure out first, what is the blast speed based on projectile motion, projectile physics, which goes back a few weeks since class, right? That's going to be like part one, at part one A and one B, so dig, dig in that. Okay. After you figure out the blast speed, then you're going to set up conservation of energy. You're just going from here to here. So it's just like from this point to this point. Uh, here, ignore this line. That's just for my AP kids. Right? But but conservation of energy. And at one point, all the energy stored in the spring, spring potential energy, that's called one half kx squared. Right? We've done a number of those over the last uh, week and a half. Right? And then right when it's blasted out, point A to point B, initial to final, right when it's being blasted out, uh, notice I'm ignoring all height change. You would have dealt with that by this point. Right? It's all kinetic energy. Right. So spring potential turns into kinetic, okay? Right, so if you know the mass of the ball, which I just gave you guys, and you know the speed, the blast speed, which you will have calculated based on projectile physics, 
And you know the spring compression, that's what X is, right? How far did you compress the spring? Which is probably a few centimeters. Uh, suppose you compress it like five centimeters. Could that be called 0.05 meters maybe? Okay. Then do you guys see how you would know everything except for this spring constant K? And you can just solve for K? You guys see that? Right? Right. Okay, so that's uh, that, that's big picture for us for the trees, uh, the way we're doing this. Okay. Oh. Let me uh, remind you guys how to solve a projectile, right? How to solve a projectile, right? Get, get a bit more granular with this, right? So, so get, suppose you do this. Suppose you take uh, a couple of bottles and you drop one and you blast one horizontally at the same time. Are they going to hit the ground at the same time? Yeah. Don't they have the exact same vertical motion because gravity pulls on the same, pulls on the same, right? All right. So what I'm trying to get at is that if you know the height of fall, you can calculate the time of fall. You don't actually need a stopwatch today. In fact. It'd be better to not use the stopwatch. Uh, no, you need to know what the time of fall is, but it's better to calculate it rather, rather than measure it. More accurate to do it that way. So if you know this height of fall, you can calculate the time of fall. Isn't that what one half GT square can be used for? Right. You can measure how far it falls. It's probably about it's probably about four meters if you do the full balcony. I bet it's probably gonna be about four meters, just like it was during projectile lab. Right. And you know G is about 10 meters per second squared. Can you calculate what that time is gonna be? Right. And then if you know how much time it's in the air for, it's projectile for, and you get out there with the meter stick and you measure how far did the ball land, right? From the base of the cliff here, right? Then can you set up this X equals VT or distance equals speed times time? Where uh, D, you can measure how far did it go horizontally. T, you will have calculated based on this ball height from here. And you can use that to calculate the blast speed because that's the horizontal component of velocity, which, which is the blast speed. You guys see that? Right, so you're going to measure the height of fall so that you can calculate the time of fall. You're going to use that time of fall in conjunction with how far it went to figure out the blast speed. And then you take the blast speed, plug it into conservation of energy, and you can calculate the spring constant. Okay, okay you guys got that? Okay, right. now let's look at the table that I gave you guys, which is the same story. It just follows the story that exactly I told you, but I want you to know exactly what you're looking at here. Right, so you guys recorded the mass. You guys have the mass, right? So I took care of that step for you guys. Save six step. Okay. Uh, do, do you guys know what G is? Yeah, 10 meters per second squared. Right. So you just fill that in right now. Right. You guys know that. Right. Uh, the height of fall. Uh, if you use the full balcony, it's probably either four meters or a little over four meters. Um, you, I've seen students use different heights, so you could uh, figure out what that is. What's the height of fall? Probably a few meters. Right. Uh, where does the ball land in meters? You can also measure that. Take the meter stick, chunk, 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 probably a few meters, right? Like three, four, five, six meters might be reasonable numbers. Oh, you can calculate the time of fall using classic H equals one half GT squared. That, that can be something you can calculate, right? Oh, you can also calculate the blast speed using this right here, D equals VT. So th these, these two are going to be calculations. Then X is a measurement, and knows, I, I labeled what X is above it, because X might be used for different things. But in this context, it's spring compression. See above X, I, I wrote spring compression. You guys see that? Right. Now, that's probably a few centimeters. But notice I said meters, because that, that's going to help you in your calculations. Right. Uh, suppose you come up with a spring compression of five centimeters. Guys, how many meters is equal to five centimeters? How many meters is that? Is it 0.05? Right, so that could be a reasonable number to go here. Right, that, right. So, so you're measuring this, this, and this. So that's really only three measurements. Right, and I, of course I gave you the mass of all. Can you guys measure three things with like a meter circle and a roller? Right, right. Because that's that's all you need. You need just three measurements. You know, besides the mass of the ball, and then some calculations, and then uh, there's enough uh, uh, information with conservation of energy you can calculate the spring constant. Okay, you guys get that. All right, so what we're about to do is we're going to go outside. All right, you guys are going to do exactly the setup. You're going to aim it horizontally. You're going to see where it lands. You're going to measure this height, this distance, and the spring compression. That's, that's the three measurements you need. The height of fall, the horizontal displacement of where it lands, and how much you compress the spring to, to make this all happen. Okay? okay. Then we'll come back to the classroom, and I will guide you guys through this process, and, and you'll get a spring constant by the end of class today. All right. You guys good? All right. Who's got any questions? Any questions? All right. So let's head outside. Uh, I will stop this recording and we'll come back in, uh, in some time closer to the end of class.